last week we were looking at Doug Jolly's HON3 that I bought from him back in the 1980s oh. and boxed up in the 1990s. Wow. And we, we got through some of that box last week and oh, it's yeah. just fascinating what's in that box. Uh, I should say. Yeah. Right. Uh, and for the most part it's intact. We've come Amazing. across two things so far right. that were broken. And everything oh, else is, is fine. It's so, good. So far. Right. So far. So we're going to continue unboxing. This is the not the typical unboxing video because we're unboxing something that I boxed up 20 years ago. So it's more of a time capsule. Exactly. More of a time capsule. But this is just really neat mm -hmm. and it's really fun for Doug because he built all of these cars back in the 70s. And so it's sort of clomping down memory lane no, for him no to unbox all this and look at the HON3 model that he built Shut many, up. many, many, many Nine, years okay, ago. Wow. So we're picking up where we left off last week. Check it out. <laughs> I did a really good job of wrapping these up. Yes, okay. sure did. Fortunately, I, I haven't stumbled across the edge yet, other than one where a wheel truck fell off. Um, any real substantial damage and, and as I'm saying a thing like that then I'm always assuming that the next thing will happen is I'll pull a whole yeah. bag of parts out instead yeah, we, of we had a lot of gondolas because like I say we hauled coal so hauled coal that, that's another microengineering yeah. another microengineering and it's so hard to tell that from the, from the scratch belt that one's uh, 9274 wow so did you use a, a card system for... Yes, yes, the, the same old system that most people are still using now, the old uh, the little yellow Waybill card with the Waybills. Mm -hmm. Same one that Micromart sells. My, my version of running has always been just turn the train on and watch it go. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I've never really that, done And there's something operation. to be said for that too. Yeah. I've, I've got some Lionel stuff that I really enjoy just watching. Another movie. box car. Another, another rail line box car. Rail line, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a nice I should have used better glue on the weights. The I weights think. are all on the loose. 3512. Brake wheels have fallen off on several of them. I'm not stumbling into them as yet, just on the loose in here. So they probably came off years ago when I was running them. It's and just never that's a never ending happens even in the largest scales yeah. too it's not yeah well it's, it's a problem even in sm3 i've been trying to find a manufacturer that that would be interested in making brake wheels out of delrin or something that's the the cast styrene another is. box car i like the pallets in the open door there yeah another rail line box car I always like. I've that seen car. those rail lines around. That was one of my favorite that. cars. I I remember that one. Oh really? Yeah, that was yeah. a fun one. Huh? I like the I like the pallets in it. The pallets like. in the open door. Oh, this yeah. is heavy. Really heavy. Nice. Maybe it's a locomotive. I mean, it's that kind of heavy. No, I think I know what this is, and I think it's something I built. I think it's a ditcher. But I'm not at all sure. But whatever it is, it is really heavy and broken, as happens with really heavy Heavy things. stuff, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, I don't recognize that one. I recognize the model, but I don't recognize and the one that I, I built. I definitely didn't build this one, um, but I did build a, oh, some manner of ditcher, but mine wasn't broken. Yeah. Um, Oddly enough, I still have that kit. I still have an H-O-1-3 kit for that. Do you? Yeah. It was one of the things that I didn't sell, because I always said, I st still want to build that ditcher someday. <laughs> well, since this is all wrapped up, Without a frame or anything, it must have been broken when I wrapped it up. I'm just sort of thinking, because, uh, so I'm not sure if the frame, because there was some other stuff with it, so maybe this is the, the frame for this guy, and it is. 
so when I boxed it up at least, it was already separated to at least this this extent. So uh, it's uh, it's a little bit problematic. There. It nice. needs a it needs a little TLC of <clears throat> glue and and somewhere you must have a flat car that goes with it. I did. Um, I broke the back of the black car because I like that look, so it had quite a sweat. And maybe it's in uh -huh. here, and maybe it's not. I, you know how things are. Maybe on the loose somewhere. Oh, a cattle car. A sheep car, as a matter of fact. I believe that's a rail line car. Okay. They came in kind of a plastic box, mm -hmm. didn't they? Yeah. I think I built a few of those, but I can't. No, the rail line came in a blue cardboard box with a white okay. label. With That's a white right. label on That's the That's right. It was one company that came in like a plastic snap lid box. That was Tomalco. That was Tomalco, okay. The wood kits. The wood kits. They had a blue instruction sheet that yes. made the box look blue. That was a long time ago. This is uh, yeah. some oddball reminiscing here, walking down memory lane. There's some dust and dirt. I, that may be the load out of this car. And then, not really, because it's a box car again. Another rail line box car. Another rail line box. I built a lot of rail line box cars. Wow. Okay. They were easy, 30, simple. Thirty-four fifty-six. Yeah. They were pretty expensive at the time. I remember they were seven fifty. Seven fifty. No, they seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, not quite. That you know, bad, actually, but. they're still in production, but I think they're probably closer to twenty dollars now. Well, you know. Oddly enough, that's probably cheaper if you adjust it for inflation is. and everything. Probably yeah. is. This might be said flat car with the broken back. It doesn't seem like there's anything in here. And it is a flat car. And uh, I don't know if I built that or you built that. It looks like one I of mine. I didn't build that. That looks like the one I built for the ditcher. Right. In fact, it, it is because it's got rust here from the... From Ditch the bucket. your bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. And I never lettered it, or and it was just kind of silly. It should at least be lettered. I never cared much for the Rio Grande's numbering system on the maintenance cars using the O. Yeah. Because it always looked like they were trying to spell a word to me. And <laughs> the worst of that was OX. I, I didn't yeah. want a car running around on my railroad that said it was an ox. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, that's the ditcher that you've got. That's the ditcher, yeah. And that's that OX. One, <laughs> you know, and I think this is the one I built because I numbered it because I just refused to have a car running around that said OX and it says 865, which mm -hmm. it shouldn't say. It should say OX. And mm -hmm. I remember now that I numbered it because yep. I refused to have an OX running around. On my it doesn't look like an OX. It doesn't look like an OX. So that, that answers that question, anyway. Another weight on the loose, yeah. but this one comes out to an open door, which makes it a little easier to do something with. Is it another rail line? Or it's another, it rail, line another rail line box car. You want to know what the weight is too? What's that? The weight is a carbide cutter from Imco. Oh, okay. Back when Imco was in the real grand shops or something? Well, no, a dear friend of mine was a machinist for Imco, and so when the cutters had dulled, he'd he used them for car weights, so he had he ended up having a bunch of them, so he just gave a bunch of them to me too. But back then, their machine shop was it, in the Rio yeah, Grande was, back shops. Uh, yeah, they had some there, but they had some there. He actually, okay. the shop he worked in was was the the one that they, where they built the machine muckers. Oh, okay. For the mining muckers. Okay. It Almost was, to the bottom. It was of the over box. on the second west there. Oh my! Oh, there it is. Oh my! I wondered where that truck was at. There it is. Seems to have lost a 55-gallon drum. Yeah, but that's that's easily wow. fixed. Look at that. Uh, yeah, boy, that truck hauled a lot. Went went a lot of miles up and down that layout. I, 
I think it was everybody's favorite, and I think it ended up in every train for some yeah. reason. And I, yeah. I don't think I ever ran it. It looked too good just sitting there. And, and like I say, and I never, and to this day, I just, I've never, I like building yeah. things and collecting things and messing around with things and then turn it on and let it run for a oh, while. Yeah. And I've never done operations or anything like that. Yeah, that was, that one was, that was an old Jordan Miniatures truck, and I built the, built the flatbed on the back of it from, from, uh, the inspiration for that truck was actually one of the old, uh, was it Ravel or somebody that made a beer wagon? Yes. Remember that? In that uh, was 24th the, yeah, scale. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or 20th that, was scale. The, <laughs> that was kind of the inspiration for this truck was that old beer wagon. I have about six of them. Yeah, no there. doubt. <laughs> typical. Typical. But, oh, I'm glad you've got that car, Dale. Wow. Look at that's that. Guy. That is a classic. Yeah, that's that that's truly, truly a classic. That was, was absolutely one of my favorite cars. I'm glad you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever regret selling all your stuff? You know what? I, not the HON3 stuff, but yeah. I haven't told you. I kept some of it. Oh, did you? I've, well, you kept those buildings that you're using for yeah, first perspective. Yeah, the structures I'm using on the SN3 layout. But, but I kept some of the HON3 trains, too. I, did you? I still have a Shea, and I had a K37, but Adam talked me out of that. So... He's talking everybody out of their yeah, HO I, right now. Well, Is that he recently needed, he that he needed did a K, Yeah, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. He needed a K37. <laughs> but I still had some old LaBelle San Juan cars that I said, but I need power for my San Juan. He said, well, it ought to be pulled by a K28 anyway. Adam just randomly one day ripped so, up his whole end scale. And yeah, now so, he's putting in HON3. So he showed, up, he showed up with a brand new painted PFM K28 and said, here, how about trading the K28 for your K37? Well, no, and you can pull your San Juan like it should be. Well, okay, so. There it is. So I still have a San Juan set now. And Me, that and would be, a, that would be really hard to get rid of. Probably the only thing that I really kind of regretted selling was uh, a couple of Rio Grande standard gauge pieces, a uh, K59 Mikado and a, and a riveted steel caboose. 9480, another high side gondola. Like yep. you say, you had a lot of high side gondolas. Yeah, we hold a lot of coal. Yeah. yeah. So the, is the coal something that you actually added or is that just left over from operations? It, well, it's... Because it seems to be well in there. Yeah, it comes off. <laughs> 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 comes off. I weathered. Easily. I weathered the inside of the car, but but it's also been weathered with coal <laughs> dust. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of detritus. I'm I'm happy to see that down in the bottom of the box. First, I'm happy to see the bottom of the box, but not really because if we pulled out yeah. another hundred of these, that'd be fine. But uh, I'm happy to see but not a lot of brake wheels. Yeah, that's or what I was going to say. Not a lot of broken or parts. Loose <laughs> wheel trucks or. Whatever parts have come loose have just come loose. Well, you've got quite a collection going. Yeah, I bought a lot of your stuff. Yes, you did. I did. Yes, you did. I'll well, you. by the time I heard about the sale, uh, most of it, well, a lot of it, you'd already sold. Well, I'll tell you where a lot of it went to was Stan Jennings, who bought quite a bit of it. Stan Jennings? Mm -hmm. I have no idea where that stuff is now. Yeah. But, 5717 and I just broke the brake handle on there trying to straighten it. But that's why there's glue and pliers yeah. to straighten it. This one, this it. one is actually scratch built. Really? Nice. Mm -hmm. So is it cattle or sheep or? Yeah, it's a, a cattle car. It's cattle. Okay. That is a handsome car. So strip wood or plastic or how did you uh, it? Styrene. Evergreen yeah. styrene. I guess in this scale, you wouldn't really have to worry that much about the styrene changing dimensions. In the larger mm -hmm. scales, especially the really large scales, uh -huh. you get the strip styrene and it just wants to, yeah. to do this. And so then you put in a thicker styrene and then it doesn't look good. Look as good. It actually works better to, to use wood at that point. 5717 scratch build. That's that neat. one is scratch build. Nice. I think we're down to the last one.
Oh, looks like another scratch built, uh, I'm thinking scratch built, it has that look. It's either that or it's a Tamalco kit. Okay. And I, I'm thinking it's a Tamalco kit. Oh, okay. Because most of the scratch building that I was doing then, I would have done it out of styrene, and this one's wood. So. Okay. I'm thinking it's probably a Tamalco kit. Yeah. And actually, yes, yeah, so I look at it because it's wood. Got it. And this is 5312. 5312. Don't know how many of these things the Rio Grande had. Um, it's really, really they had 350, if I believe that. <laughs> of course you would know. 350 cattle cars. They had 750 boxcars. Jeez. But the car, the one they had the most of was the gondolas. The gondolas, that makes sense. And I have no idea how many of those had. The only reason I remember the others is because I know what the number series are okay. on the cars. So. <laughs> very, very neat. That, that was interesting to see that stuff, Dale. It's been a long, long time since I've seen it. It's especially nice to see that truck again. That's a truck. <laughs> I, I, somehow I have an attachment to that truck. So, Well, there you go. <laughs> it was really nice to see this stuff again. Thank you for sharing. Well, you're very welcome. Well, thank you. This was fun. Thank you, Dale. It's, yeah. It was fun. It, it was, was fun. clomping down memory lane. Well, we finished going through the box. <sighs> no spiders. No spiders. And I, I don't know what we're going to do now because we don't have an HON3 rep. Well, We've only got part of a G-scale, G-gauge, number one gauge railroad, and we certainly don't have an HON3 railroad anymore, no. but I'm thinking a display case. A display case for these. Because this stuff is too neat, and I it certainly is. don't have an interest in selling it or no. anything. And it's just really fun. It's so got a, a lot of history model. with us and Doug, and just so they're just That's too really cool, cool to get rid of, and so they're gonna go in a really nice display case. Absolutely. So there it is. Well, anyway, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel, and that will give you the opportunity to binge watch. Binge watch, because there's all kinds of, there's, there's like 500 videos. Wow, that's a lot. 500. 500 videos. Anyway, you can, you can binge watch all of that, including the first half of the show of Doug Jolly's HON3 stuff, and his layout, the SN3 Railroad, and this is like, his second SN3 railroad. That's pretty cool though. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you if you uh, are not a subscriber, here comes the blue button, which will make <laughs> you a subscriber. You ready for it? Zoink, right there. Blue button makes you a subscriber. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you on Tuesday when we do some of that kind of thing. Yeah. We'll see you then. We'll see you. Bye-bye.